I'm a formulation chemist working on adhesives and I've got some ideas for replacing bisphenol A mainly because of the environmental concerns of that compound and in fact I've just been sent by one of my suppliers a sample of an alternative material. So I need to find some examples of existing experiments with existing formulations which I can then take and modify and replace the bisphenol A with the new material. So I'm going to search in the notebook and I'm going to search in my own experiments and in my colleagues' experiments. And I'll just do a simple search. And in fact, I'll just search for bisphenol A because I'm a little bit lazy. Uh, and I'll get some examples of experiments here. And some of these are not relevant. They're analysis of different batches. Uh, there's the experiment that I've just created with my ideas. And then further down, this looks like a synthesis experiment and this could be the useful one with a two-part adhesive. Now, if I had more results, so if I need to look in more detail here, as well as this simple view, I can also look at the content of these experiments as I browse through the experiments. So here, this was the synthesis of an intermediate, and this one is the two-part adhesive, and it looks like it could be useful. Here's the resinous part. It's using this bisphenol A epoxide, and then the catalyst part, etc. So I'm going to open that experiment. And here is the experiment, and it looks pretty useful. So I could just take uh, some of this experiment and copy it into my new experiment, but actually, because this has got the, the two different uh, formulation parts for the two parts of the adhesive, and it's also got links to some testing which might be relevant. I'm going to take this whole experiment and clone it and create a new experiment which is a copy of this experiment. So I just go up to the cogwheel and I save this experiment as another experiment. So this new experiment will belong to me. It will have the new date and time, but all of the other data will be the same. So here comes the new experiment and we can see that it's got that same information. And I can take this Excel sheet, which is using the epoxide of bisphenol A, and modify it with the new material that I've been sent. So I open up uh, Excel. And in fact, this, this formulation uh, contains various different adducts, adducts of bisphenol A. So some of these I might want to delete these rows, delete that row, uh, delete this other row. And then this material I'm going to replace with the new material that I've been sent, which is called green, green oxide 3. Sorry, green oxide 3. And now I need to uh, modify the content, the amounts here, so this comes up to the 100. So I think we need to have 70 parts of this one and uh, 75 part 1. 55.3 and 55.2. So we've modified the Excel and then we select the cells, close Excel, save the changes, and the modified data will come back into my new experiment. So the data comes back into the new experiment. And of course, I would change other features of this experiment. I would put here using green, ox green oxide uh, 3, C, etc. And then I'd put in the different experimental conditions, etc., etc. I've also got links here to the testing of this adhesive so I can go and look at those experiments and see how the original adhesive was tested and then do similar tests on the new adhesive. So you've seen in this example how I've used the Biovia notebook to find experimental data to find an old experiment, how I could then save time by reusing that old experiment. In this case, I clone the experiment which saved me time having to enter in all the data all over again, I was able to just put in the changes which I was doing in the new experiment compared to the old experiment. So that's just one example. There are many 
of the features within the notebook which help the scientist uh, save time.